Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Using the HTTP Server Driver for iOS Shortcuts and Voice Control. My name is Vincent Bova and I'm the Director of Dealer Experience at RTI. I want to thank Luke Augustakis, our team member in Australia, for working with the HTTP Server Driver and coming up with creative ways to control iOS shortcuts and Siri voice control. We are discovering many case uses for the HTTP Server Driver, but today we will be focusing on the Siri shortcuts and voice control. Today, we're going to go over some key points about the driver. What is the HTTP Server Driver and how does it work? Well, the HTTP server driver listens on a defined port that you set for commands that we can configure on our iOS devices that support Siri shortcuts. These shortcuts can trigger events on an RTI system either by pressing a shortcut in the widget section of your app or by using straight Siri voice control. Another question is, are there any other case uses for the HTTP server driver? Lots of dealers are coming up with creative ways to use this driver for control of several different manufacturers. Right now, we're working on some geofencing possibilities, and some people suggested other ways to interact with iOS. Since this is not an official Apple integration, it's, you know, this is specifically designed to speak to Apple through shortcuts. However, RTI is working on Apple integration as we speak. So what will you learn today? Well, first you'll learn how to configure the HTTP server driver for Siri command, for Siri commands and shortcuts. You'll learn how to test the commands using a temporary website that you create. You'll learn how to create shortcut get commands on a current iOS device. You'll also learn how to use the driver to call Siri shortcuts from the widget menu, as well as using the Siri voice control feature. Okay, let's get programming. I'm gonna call up my Apex system, and I'm going to open up the system tray and expand it so you can see all the devices in our system. This is a distinct advantage of Apex in that you can see everything that's involved in the system. We put lots of different drivers in this system that allows for really robust voice control options. For example, we have security, lighting, IP power management, sprinklers, and shades. We also have other types of devices like music and regular video activities as well. So as you can see, these drivers are perfect for voice automation. Let's add the HTTP server driver to Apex. I'm going to click the Add Workspace item and I'm going to navigate to the Drivers tab, and I'm going to add the HTTP Server Driver. Here's the driver. I'm going to add it to the global area, since this is a general device, and it's not confined to a specific room. This driver won't create a user interface, but you'll be able to configure the driver for events. Let's move list by clicking close and then moving the driver up in the list. Now let's click on the driver and configure it. I'm going to go to my driver properties. I'm going to explain each item for you so that you understand how to configure it. Under system settings, the processor is what processor the driver runs off of. It will always default to run off the master processor, but in RTI programming, you can always run a driver off of any processor you have in the system, whether it's your master processor or expansion processors. For the port setting, you're going to pick a port that's greater than 1025. Those, those ports are usually reserved for other internet activities. So I'm going to name my port 8190. Next, under heading and the next couple of tabs, these are going to be designed for that website you're going to use to test your shortcuts before you enter them in as voice shortcuts. So the heading is going to be the name of the website's heading. I'm going to call this something like Smith Residence. The next line under text is going to be some subheading. So I'm going to call this Siri Commands. 
Render Buttons allows you to create a user interface for the purpose of testing your series shortcuts. We recommend clicking this to test and then unchecking it after you're finished testing for security purposes. Next, you're going to specify how many events you want to add. The driver supports up to 100 events. If you want more events than that, you could add a driver, another driver, but be sure to specify a different port if you're using multiple drivers. Specify how many events you're going to add. You could add up to 100. Since this is only a tutorial, I'm going to specify three events from the dropdown. Up to 100 events can be used per driver. Now you'll see the events open up in the driver. Let's start with event one. Let's give this event a name. So I'm just going to call this Office Lamp On. Next, I'm going to specify a special name called an action to identify that event and call it from the shortcut. So I'm going to give this a name that makes sense and keep the forward slash. So let's call this Office Lamp On. I suggest keeping everything lowercase and no spaces. Let's create another event. Let's call this one Arm House, since we have security and other systems. And let's call our action trigger forward slash Arm House. For the third event, this is going to be just a simple activity. So I'm going to call this Watch Satellite. And of course, my event is going to match my name. So we'll call this Watch Satellite. These strings are going to trigger events. You're about to set the events next. Click Driver Events, and now you'll see the events you created, the triggers you created. Let's start with the Office Lamp On. In, this, in the below macro list, provide instructions on what your, how to turn on your Office Lamp. So let's bring in a command. Let's select the driver. We'll pick the Lutron Radio Rot 2. And let's select the function. Since the lamp is a switch, we're going to look for our switch commands. And we'll specify the office lamp from the list of devices. We don't want to toggle it. We want to turn it on. Next, for Arm House, let's specify some security. Again, we're going to bring in a command. We're going to select a device from our Elk Security. And our function is going to arm away our main home with the code that arms the system. We'll just use one, two, three, four for now. We could also add some more functions, such as a relay to close the garage. And we can also use a command to shut the lights off. So we'll pick the Lutron driver again. We'll specify our keypad button, and we can, or we could just pick a phantom keypad button and specify a scene that shuts off the whole entire house lights. And button five shuts the house lights off. And for the satellite, we could just add some functions that turn on the satellite. For example, we could bring in a Samsung TV driver power on. We could also bring in another input source for the television as well. We'll set it to HDMI 1. And we can bring in a command from the DirecTV box to turn on. So we'll say DirecTV, Family Room DirecTV on. And we could switch these around any order we want. That will turn on the TV, turn on the DirecTV, and switch the input of the Samsung TV quickly. Okay, now that we've configured our events, let's load our system up. I'm going to click Communications, then I'm going to click Send to Device. It'll build my system file. I will make sure my IP address is, co is correct, and I'll send my device to my processor. I'll click close. Now, once my processor is finished configuring, I can use that test site 
Remember, we click that Render Buttons feature here, and that will create a test website for us with these titles. So let's call up that website. Let's open a web browser, and let's put in an IP address of our processor, followed by the port number we used. We picked 8190 and hit Enter. Here you'll see that Smith Resident Siri commands, and we can test our functions by clicking them and watching them turn the lights on or arm the house or watch satellite in this case. This is just simply a screen to test commands. Once you're finished with this, we're now ready to configure our phone. Let's do that next. On your iPhone or iPad, call up the Siri app, Siri Shortcuts. Look for it in the app or download it from the App Store if you don't have it in your system. You should have it. Once you click on Siri Shortcuts, you will, you will then be taken to a, um, a screen where you can add your shortcuts. So open up the Siri Shortcuts, and then create a shortcut by clicking on the plus sign. Then you want to add an action, so click that. And now you want to navigate to the web action. There it is with our yellow um, arrow. Then go down to the web area and then click on Get Contents of URL. Once you click on that, click on the Get Contents of URL and type in the path of those actions. Start by entering your processor's IP address, followed by the port, followed by that custom action. This one will be the office lamp on. Then click Next. Give your shortcut a name. This is going to be the name of the actual shortcut and the actual Siri voice command, office lamp on. You'll see that your shortcut will be created in the form of a little shortcut button which will work if you press it. And if you navigate to your app and swipe to the right, you'll be able to see your widgets or shortcuts in the widget app, and you can press that. The very first time you press it, it will ask permission. So just allow that, and you won't have to answer that again. Now you can turn your office lamp on or off in the shortcut, in the shortcuts area of your phone. Continue to test your voice commands, making sure each one will do the necessary task. For example, when you give the shortcut a name, that's the name that's going to be the shortcut for the voice control. So, hey Siri, office lamp on, will turn on the office lamp, and so on and so forth. Other things you can do with the app are, if you have an RTI controller, you can create a shortcut page on the RTI controller. For example, here's our office lamp on button. I can click on a macro type here. Let's bring in a command. Let's select the HTTP server driver. Let's select the communications function. And over here, I can actually enter in a command. Let's enter in that same office lamp on command. First, I'm going to put the processor's IP address in followed by colon and the port number, followed by the action name, office lamp on. This command will now trigger that command on your any RTI controller. Some popular questions. People wonder what else this app can be used for. Really sky's the limit. There's a lot of different uses for this app. Some people are looking into Amazon control, Android control, and other elements of iOS control. Other people ask if you could run this app remotely, if you could run these shortcuts outside the home. We don't recommend doing that, but if you wanted to, you would forward that port 8190 to your processor's IP address, and you would enter in your external IP in the commands instead of your internal IP. While we don't recommend using that, it will work. It could, however, be a security risk. In closing, the 
HTTP server driver is an amazing driver that you can use for Siri shortcuts and voice control. You can access the shortcuts on your phone, or you could simply invoke Siri by saying the underlying command you set up on the phone. The HTTP server driver will, you know, listen to that port for commands that come over and trigger RTI actions. If you have any questions about the driver, please contact dealer experience at rticorp.com. Thanks for watching.